So, you've just bought Dragon Ball Fighters on sale and you've decided that you want to win it all this year and enter EVO 2018. You're brand new to fighting games and the controls on the menu screen confuse you, but with a little time and practice, anything's possible. So how long do we have before EVO starts? One month? That's not a lot of time at all. Okay, so we got one month, we might as well start with the character choice. Your team has enough slots for three characters, so you might as well pick your favorite characters from the show. Okay, maybe not that character, trust me, I'll thank me later. Oh hey, Super Saiyan Goku, now that is a really decent choice, very respectable of you. But there are a few things you should know before dedicating yourself to Super Saiyan Goku. Let's go ahead and start with the negatives of the character. For starters, Super Saiyan Goku has no idea what a 2L is. For all you people at home that also don't know, it's a down light that hits your opponent low, meaning they have to block it crouching. It's something you really want to have, trust me. Luckily for our main protagonist here, he does eventually learn what a 2L is when he ascends to the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan form, but that really doesn't affect us because we've already chosen Super Saiyan Goku, and now we can't change. That's how character loyalty works. But what does not having a low 2L really mean for our game plan when we're going up against an opponent? Well, in essence, it just means Super Saiyan Goku is much more of an honest character. And in this case, honest means that he's not going to be hitting the opponent with any mix-ups or insane gimmicks. And while being honest might sound like an admirable trait, it really doesn't mean anything to a Kid Boo main online in 5 frames of lag hitting you with the same mix-up over and over again. At that point, you're going to be wishing for some setups of your own, and at least a down light. Speaking of setups, those are extremely hard to come by with Super Saiyan Goku. Even with all level 3s in the game causing an untackable hard knockdown, Super Saiyan Goku is one of the few in the game that actually switches the side the opponent lands on, meaning that if you perform the level 3 on an opponent in the corner, you've essentially given them a way out. I mean, don't get me wrong, you still get the knockdown, you just don't get the corner pressure as well. It's not too bad, but I mean, I mean come on, Bardock gets one that doesn't own corner, why can't you have one? But it's not all bad for Super Saiyan Goku. He does have one of the better beams in the game in his Kamehameha. He can even angle it down if that's something you want to do. This same beam is also his assist, making it one of the more versatile in the game, which means he can fit on almost every team if you're willing to have him there. I, I mean, if you're willing to have him there, that's kind of the point of this video. Super Saiyan Goku also has some really basic combos that do some really decent damage. For around 2 bars, he's capable of doing around 5,000 damage just by himself. This is possible because he's able to link his two Kamehameha specials together if he knocks the opponent down from high enough. And I guess that brings us to the team aspect of the game and where Goku really belongs. If you couldn't tell the weaknesses of Super Saiyan Goku, that being that he doesn't really have any great mix-ups and his block strings are kind of basic, he's not really going to be breaking any records for world's greatest point character. But like I said earlier, because of his beam assist, he fits great on every team. He also does really good damage with a little bit of bar, making him great for the mid to anchor position. Some fun teams you can run with Super Saiyan Goku include the Kame style team, the Saiyan Trio team, the Two and a Half Men team, and the I Can't Believe I Won a Tournament using Super Saiyan Goku team. As somebody that does play Super Saiyan Goku myself, I opt to run the Bardock in the point position, Super Saiyan Goku in mid, and then Yamcha as my anchor. Usually the game plan is to do as much Bardock stuff as I possibly can, using Goku's Kamehameha to either help me during combos, or to just keep the pressure on during the neutral. As far as Bardock goes, I'm going to talk about him more in a future video, but concerning Goku as of now, usually Goku never comes out if Bardock is still alive and on the team. But if I need to swap Goku in, the Yamcha assist actually does make his basic block strings a lot better. Bardock's assist also helps Goku put on the pressure during block, so I feel like this team actually runs very well together. So if you really want Goku to be the standout star of your team, I would say make sure that the other two characters you pick do have assists that help him in this way. This could be anything from a beam assist or something that just holds him down like Yamcha. Before we end the video though, I do want to talk about one last thing that Super Saiyan Goku really does well, and that's that he serves as a great introduction to Dragon Ball Fighters. If you're brand new to the game, like the situation I presented at the beginning of the video, Super Saiyan Goku is a really great place to start. While he does have some flaws, they're usually not things that beginner players are going to notice right away anyway and the great damage and basic combos really help. So if you're wondering if you should play Super Saiyan Goku, and you're the type of guy that swears against mix-ups, then I say yeah, go for it. Or don't. I mean, you can really do whatever. Let me know your thoughts on this video down in the comments below. I'll be down there as always. While you're down there, if you like this video and want to see more videos like this from the channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm Dr. Doya. I'll see you in the next video.